what's going on YouTube fam? Mikey here shooting another high adventure video. Guys, summer's on its deathbed. It is September, middle of September. We literally went from 95 on Friday as a high to 70 on Monday as a high. That is classic Idaho weather. So the good thing about this time of year is that the river itself is warm. I have a small window to work with. It's gonna be like I have 85 today and like 86 tomorrow. And then after that, it's literally like plummeting down into the 60s. So I'm starting off my day and I'm gonna hit a stretch of river where I've caught some good brown trout before. So it's morning time, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm gonna try to get some brown trout to start the day off. Without further ado, let's get to it. This is what I'm gonna start off throwing today is a little brown trout colored Rapala. It seems like when I throw brown trout colors, I get exclusively brown trout. Um, and they are a pretty feisty fish. They seem to be more active than the golden or the uh, rainbow trout in this river. So that's what we're gonna start off with. Got him, got him. There's one right in that current. Come on, baby. Yeah, it's a rainbow. Whoa, there he goes. Wasn't a very big one. That's the first time, legit, first time I've ever gotten a rainbow on a jerk bait. Oh, that's that's a brown trout color. That might have been, that, that was a nice, that looked like a native bow. That was fun. There we go. Check that out. He's got a rock. He's gonna throw it at me. Let's try put, I'm gonna try a little crawdad for bait. Let's give it a go. There we go. Got a nice piece of white crawdad tail meat. That's gonna really stand out there on the bottom. I can see trout flashing down there. So they're definitely eating and they're down there. They're just not hitting the bait that I'm throwing. So let's try a little, little crawdad tail meat. Got him. Oh, this is a nice one. Guys, this is a nice trout. This is a really nice trout. Okay, nice and easy. This is this is a, a native trout. This is a native bow right here. Yeah, she's running up river. Nice and easy. Oh. Uh -oh. Look at this. Look at that. Yes. This is a beautiful, beautiful fish. Look at that. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. Yes! I've got a small hook on, so I gotta be careful. Oh, I wish I had my net. Yeah, look at that! Look at this! Woo! Oh, my word, right in the corner of the mouth. Guys, just first cast on that crawdad. Look at that trout, that is beautiful. That is a native rainbow trout. That's not a that's not a, a stocked trout because they release stocked fish in here. That is a native of these waters. That is beautiful. She's probably about a pound and a half, I'd say. We can give her away. Oh, that is exactly what we're after. Wouldn't hit the jerk bait. First cast with that bad boy though, that crawdad. Loved it some crawdad. Look at that. What a beautiful fish. What an absolutely beautiful fish. All right, I think it is safe to say I'm putting the lures away and we are going all crawdad. That was the first, I mean, the first float down. And you know, I can't visibly see that fish from the surface. I could just see flashes of other smaller trout. So I knew they were down there. And oh my word, what a way, what a way to kick things off. I'm gonna go find some more. We're gonna go forage just right behind me here in the river. Just flip over some rocks. Let's see if we can get another crawdad or two and maybe we could add another one to the to the uh, feeding today. So guys, check this out. I just found a dragonfly. Oh yeah, we gotta try to use this for bait. Let's go give it a go. I don't know, it might not work, but we gotta give it a try. Crawdad right down here. Got him. 
Boom. So I've got a dragonfly and I've got a crawdad. There's some bait. All right, guys, my bait is literally trying to fly away. Look at that. That is crazy. Let's see if we can get something else here. It's going to be really difficult. I need to get it down to the bottom. Ooh, that might have been a fish. Well, the dragonfly is gone. Either I got snagged on the bottom, that was another fish. Time to use the crawdad. Look at that, just a nice white piece of meat. A little bit of pink tint to it. Those trout just can't pass that up. They just can't. It just goes floating right on by. Got him. Not very big. These are the little ones I'm seeing down there, flashing. Look at that. Pretty trout though. Pretty trout. Oh, you didn't leave my bait. Come on, man. That's not cool. Pretty trout. Oh. Oh, there you go. Right back in. Well, that was a nice little rainbow trout, probably about 10, 11 inches. I think now I'm gonna go throw a wetsuit on, throw my snorkel mask on. We're gonna dive in this river and go catch some crawdads because what I wanna do with this recipe today is I am going to stuff that trout with crawdads and cook it. Uh, I've only ever stuffed a trout one time. In fact, I'll put a link in that video. It pops up right here. There's a video to that. It was on ice fishing. Um, I stuffed a trout during that time and it was actually really good. So we're gonna give it a try this time. We're gonna, we're gonna stuff it with some crawdads. Some of you might've recognized this spot too. This is where I came out and hand line fish and actually caught a native trout much like that one actually the one I caught handline fishing I think was a little bit bigger than that guy uh, I also put a link uh, a little link that's gonna pop up right now to that video and I'll have a link in the description below so go check out those videos let's get popping time to catch some crawdads back into the river we go for one of the final times of 2019 I apologize for a little of the shakiness because in this stretch of river I am fighting a fair amount of current uh, so I'm trying to dive and fight the current to catch these crawdads. There's one flipping out from underneath of that from underneath that rock. They're so dang cool, man. Just like freshwater lobster. Except unfortunately they don't get the size of lobster. He's got my finger right there. Uh, and that's why I wear gloves always. This guy actually gets a good chunk of my finger right there. That hurts a decent amount because they got some power in those claws, that's for sure. As you saw earlier in the video, that one picked up a small stone. That guy was halfway submerged. He was kind of down there in the sand and silt. Tis the season. They are starting to um, starting to bed down for the year. As as the year goes on, they'll more and more will start to disappear, and I won't be able to find them out and about. But uh, uh, for now, for the, today, I was fortunate enough. They're still out, still able to flip over some rocks, and uh, you'll see here in a minute. There are actually a few out. There are two under that rock right there, so that was kind of a bonus. Um, but I'll show you here, kind of like this guy. That's how I'm used to finding them, just kind of laying out on the bottom. Now, this time of year, like I said earlier, it's the warmest this river will be, so there are more out. You can see another one just hanging out right there. So that water is as warm as it's going to be all year because it's had all year to warm up. And here, you can kind of see a couple of crawdads right there. There's another one right there. Uh, fourth one right there. So that's how I'm used to finding these crawdads, just diving down and just seeing them literally like that, hanging out on the bottom. I don't usually have to flip over too many rocks. This year's been a little bit different though with a uh, little bit cooler weather. Summer was a little late in arriving, but not too shabby of a time. Still finding a lot of fun crawdads. There's a nice looking spinner right there. That's probably about $3 spinner. Definitely snag that guy and toss him later. Uh, another good looking spinner right here. That's like a classic look right there. Um, I'm, I'm collecting, these were all actually towards the end of the dive. I kind of started noticing them uh, when I wasn't looking for crawdads, just as I was kind of looking around. That is a good looking brown trout color right there. Uh, that'll be really nice. I'm up to like, I don't know, I've got maybe eight or ten dollars worth of spinners. Definitely a bonus find in the river today. Might have to shoot an exclusive video just throwing the spinners I find. Good times once again. All right, glad to see there were still plenty of crawdads out. and In fact, quite a few out for the end of the year, so glad we could catch some. I might end up going and getting some and putting some on ice, then that way I have some bait for later this fall when I know I can't jump in the river and get any, so that's actually not a bad idea. Anywho, so for the first step of this cooking expedition, I have my little cooker set up 
right there. And we're gonna boil up some water, cook these crawdads about halfway, shuck them, so we, and then get all that tail and claw meat out and have it in a bowl ready to stuff in our trout. So that is step one. So I probably should have brought a little bit bigger pot, but they all just barely fit in there. Everybody's cooking down nicely. Give those just a minute or two more, and then we'll pull them out. Good red color right there, check that out. Those are done, we'll go ahead and turn that heat off and get to cleaning them. All right, so the next step is we're gonna clean this trout. Look how big that bad boy is. Gonna clean him with this knife. Once again, a subscriber sent to me. Thank you so much for that. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna clean him out, basically hollow him out. We'll start down there. Cut straight up. Clean all that out in there. Yeah, let's cut this off. Let's see what he's been eating. There's something hard in there. Tell you that. I don't know if I'm gonna get it to come out or not though. I don't know what that is, but it's it's white. Wait, there's bones in there. That's a I, that's either a cro might be a small fish. Yep, there are a bunch of little ribs. So that's a small fish. There's something else in there. Let's see if I can get it out. Oh, check this out, guys. Look. There is the... That's the spine. That is the spine of that small fish. That's not so small. It's probably about three inches long or so, the spine of the fish. So that's probably about a five-inch fish or so. <laughs> that's pretty cool. All right, so I don't normally like to take the head or the tail off of my fish, but check out the size of my frying pan. I mean, this is the biggest frying pan I have, and there's no way he's going to fit in there. So I'm going to have to chop a little bit off here and take the head off as well, just so we can fit in there. All right, there we go. Got it nice and cleaned up. We've got it all hollowed out on the inside. Maybe clean this out a little bit more. And then this is where we're gonna go ahead and stuff our crawdads in. Let me show you how we're gonna do that. All right, so you can see I've got a nice bit of crawdad meat here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prepare this separately. So I'm gonna put a little olive oil in here, about like so. Then also add a little Old Bay seasoning. Oh, not the whole thing. Right over top of everything. And I'm gonna add some garlic powder. Go ahead and mix all that together. Get a little spice going on with our crawdad. There we go. Now here comes kind of the crazy part. Guys, I am no surgeon. I do not claim to be a doctor. I'm gonna take some needle and thread and sew this trout up and we're gonna put the crawdad meat in there and sew it all up. So let's give it a try. Here goes nothing. You can sit right there. I've got to use like pliers to grab onto this because it's super slippery. There we go. I'm sure some of you at home are like, oh mate, give it a rest. This poor trout's been through enough already. He's dead. Like, if you're hurt, don't ask me. Or just understand that, you know, it's 50-50 if you need me to sew you up in the wild. Probably be better off just letting me cut it all the way off. Like, so if you had a limb that needed to be sewn, I'd probably just be like, yeah, no, how about we just take it off? Like, it's just a small scratch. I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> not, not until I get done with it. Be more than a scratch. All right. So let me show you what I got going on here. So that is how it is. Take this guy and we can just tighten it all up. Cinches it all shut. All right, just loosen it up a little bit. So now what we can do, we can shove our crawdad right down in there. So just start feeding it in like so. 
There we go. Last a bit of it. Look at that. Check that out. It's all like packed in there. Big time. Sweet. What I'm going to do is just take my ends here and we'll tie them up. Like so. So then that all stays tight. There we go. Alright, our crawdad is in there. Now it's time to season the outside of the trout. So first we'll start with by melting some butter. A whole, whole lot of butter. Now I have to be careful too because on these uh, skillets, they tend to warm up and I can burn my fish. I like to do that it seems like, but you can already tell this is going to be a good recipe because we're starting with a half a stick of butter. It's heating up nicely. Nice butter bath. Oh, that sounds great. A butter bath? You know, people take milk baths. <gasps> I might have just found the new trend. Guys, I am going to start butter bath. Hashtag butter bath. I'm going to get like, like a hundred pounds of butter, melt it. Actually, that sounds really hot. Sounds like you could really scald yourself. You would taste delicious though, um, uh, you know, after you got out. So that's a little weird. But anywho, butter bath might be the new thing. We need to get that trend going. Hashtag butter bath. Now for the fish, I'm gonna be using a little roasted garlic and herb seasoning. And I'm gonna just put this right in here. I'm gonna be laying that fish right on top of it. Along with some garlic powder and some salt and pepper. Then we'll lay our trout right on top of that seasoning bed. If he can fit in there. Then we'll go ahead and season this side of the trout. I love, love, love this roasted garlic and herb seasoning. Guys, for fish, this is just the cat's pajamas. I can't recommend it enough. Never forget the salt though. I love the seasonings, but you've got to make sure you put salt and pepper on there or else the fish just kind of tastes meh. Well guys, check that out. It is smelling super delicious. I'm gonna just kind of maneuver it around a little bit in the butter. Make sure it's getting that buttery goodness. I need to get a different pan for this, but that's how we're looking right now. And it is smelling really good out here on the river. This is gonna be delicious. Go ahead and put this bad boy. What'll happen is, is those crawdads that are inside, they'll cook the rest of the way down as well. That looks awesome and smells awesome. All right, guys, we're just about done. Check that out right there. I'm gonna probably flip it because it is such a big, thick trout. I'm gonna probably flip it one more time, uh, make sure everything's nice and thoroughly cooked. And then we'll just be able to pop that bad boy open and even eat the crawdads on the inside too. I'm really excited for this one. All right, guys, check it out. Check that, you see the crawdad in there? Still stuffed in there. Let's go ahead and cut that twine. I need my knife. Oh, wow. Guys, I can tell you right now, the skin is crackling off. All right, let me show you this here. Let me see if I can lift it up. Trout stuffed with crawdad. Oh, my word, that looks super delicious. Let's see if I can open this trout up for you guys here to show you. Look at that. Stuffed with crawdad. Oh boy, look at that. <laughs> Pull some crawdad out. Look at that. Steaming hot crawdad right from the inside of that trout. Here we go. Oh my word. Some nice tender bit of trout. Oh wow, cooked to perfection. It's flaking right off the ribs. That is truly, truly delicious. So here's a close up. You can see that crawdad that was stuffed under the ribs of that trout. So it is all just stuffed in that trout. But that kind of gives you a visual of what the inside of that trout looks like. Pretty sweet. Now we're gonna go bit of trout, bit of crawdad, all on one large fork full. Mm. YouTube fam, big bite of spicy crawdad and native rainbow trout. Mm. Fresh out of the river, 
if you can find trout and you can find crawdads in your area, you have to give this a try. This is a home run. Mm. YouTube fam, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the recipe. Hope you enjoyed the video. So much more to come. Just because summer's over doesn't mean we're done yet. We've still got a long ways to go. So many cool videos to come. I will see you guys in the next one. Mm.